Okay, we've got a lot to talk about today, so get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, first of all, from Dean Johnson, uh, on July 23rd, 2024, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand signed on as a co-sponsor of the Rounds Schumer UAP Disclosure Act. You know, last time around, it was the Schumer Rounds Amendment, uh, but this time Rounds is leading the charge, so it's the Rounds Schumer Amendment. Uh, either way, it uh, looks like Kirsten Gillibrand has signed on to this thing. So, uh, you know, I, I'm still not quite sure what's going on with Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, but either way, she is supporting this amendment, and that's a great thing. Uh, okay, check this out. This is also really cool from Dean Johnson again, uh, Douglas Dean Johnson. The UAP Disclosure Act, the proposed Pentagon Arrow rewrite of November 2023. Uh, yeah. Uh, in light of recent statements made by the former head of Arrow, uh, the lovely Dr. John Kirkpatrick, uh, asserting that the Pentagon Arrow successfully derailed the uh, Schumer Rounds uh, Amendment, I am releasing here a proposed 33-page line-by-line rewrite of the Senate passed UAPDA that the Pentagon provided to congressional negotiators during in-stage negotiations in 2023. Yeah, so, you know, the Senate uh, had their, their version of the UAP Disclosure Act. Uh, the Pentagon said, not so fast, guys. We're going to we're gonna rewrite it for you, uh, and we're going to change some major stuff. The most interesting thing about uh, the changes that I saw uh, was the changes to eminent domain. Uh, the O-U-S-D-I-N-S, and, and that's where Arrow was housed under, uh, draft, you know, the Arrow draft, proposed substantial weakening of the provision by replacing mandatory language, for example, the federal government shall exercise eminent domain, uh, with non-binding language. Uh, it is the sense of Congress that the federal government should exercise eminent domain appropriately. Uh, but OUSD INS slash arrow did not propose deleting the objects to which such eminent domain should apply. Any and all recovered technologies of unknown origin and biological evidence of non-human intelligence that may be controlled by private persons or entities, they left that language in, interestingly. And this is where it gets weird, okay? Uh, because the uh, revisions, the arrow uh, version of the Schumer Rounds Amendment, uh, would have required that any such exotic material be made available to arrow rather than to an independent review board uh, and would have assigned uh, to the president rather than the review board certain determinations regarding such material. So yeah, uh, if, if you find a UFO, Arrow gets it, not the review board. Now I have major doubts about the review board and about eminent domain, uh, but let's, let's continue on. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Douglas Dean Johnson reached out to Sean Kirkpatrick and asked him about this. He said, what was the rationale for recommending retention of proposed new provisions of law that would have provided something of a legal foundation for Arrow or other federal entities to assert control over hypothetical, hypothetical technologies of unknown origin or hypothetical evidence of non-human intelligence? Uh, was this a just-in-case provision? Sean Kirkpatrick, the lovely, replied, At the time, the conspiracy frenzy was pushing this narrative of some prime contractor having this material, and there were these lingering allegations of Arrow not having authorities, despite it being written into law previously. So a compromise was proposed to allow for the exercising of eminent domain under Arrow's authority to underscore that Arrow could compel disclosure of anything should anything exist. Since we know nothing exists, we didn't feel it made our job harder and felt this could close a gap in uninformed allegations. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> uh, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick saying, they know point blank for sure that nothing exists. There's no UFOs. There's no UFO crashes. There's not going to be any material retrieved from UFO crashes because there's no UFOs. So yeah, I ask you, is this an honest investigator looking into an unknown phenomenon? No, because he says he knows. 
nobody knows, right? You know, a scientific inquiry, no, there's like never anything definitive, right? It's all, well, we need more evidence, you know, we need further, uh, you know, tests done, stuff like that, right? Uh, so none of that here. Uh, point blank, definitive statement. Uh, we know nothing exists. So obviously, Sean Kirkpatrick is just part of the cover up. Uh, I've been thinking about his weird comments the other day uh, to Merrick von Rennenkamp, uh, where he was like uh, really debunking like the gimbal, for example, badly. And I realized after thinking about it, it's because there's no good debunks left. That's the secret. That's why Sean Kirkpatrick was saying, oh, well, it was it was the sun glare, right? Even though it happened at night. Because he can just say, oh, really? It, it happened at night? Well, I'll have to review the data. It just gives him an easy out. Because there's no good debunkings left, only bad debunkings. And so that was, that's what the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick was putting out, in my opinion. Either way, uh, here is Arrow's uh, proposed uh, amendment last time around, uh, you know, replacing stuff uh, from the uh, Senate's version of the Schumer Rounds Amendment with their own amendment, saying that if there's any UFO material retrieved, they get it, not the review board. Meanwhile, speaking of Merrick von Rennenkamp, uh, he appeared on the latest episode of Weaponized, a great episode. They talk a lot about the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of great sound bites from this episode, uh, but one of the, the bits that struck out to me most was this uh, little rant by George Knapp. I really appreciated what he had to say here. You know, so much of what Kirkpatrick says is basically, trust me, bro. Um, I can't tell you which cases we're investigating. I can't tell you who the witnesses we talked to are. I can't tell you what the sensor systems that we have looked at that debunk these particular cases. You just have to trust me that I've explained it all the way. Not only the public, but the media and Congress. Trust me, there's nothing to this. Move along, folks. And I, I don't trust him. I mean, for reasons that you've made pretty clear, he doesn't seem to know a heck of a lot about the most best known and most important cases. And we know for a fact, Jeremy and I know for an absolute fact, that key whistleblowers who have shared information with Grush did not talk to Arrow. They don't trust him. They don't even trust Congress. They don't feel like they can come forward, share the information, and they will be protected right now which is like a big reason that the Schumer rounds amendment to the NDAA has a new life. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm just kind of disgusted by the, the assumption that we would all go ahead and accept his word for it. As he said in your interview, well, look, all these people looking at this evidence, there's no credible physicists who are there. Yeah, these guys work with these sensor systems every day. These pilots are the best we have. They're the best in the world. They know what their planes are showing them. They know what they see with their own eyes how the sensor systems work and the platforms, they know their stuff. Maybe they're not a physicist. They don't need to be a physicist to tell us something weird is going on, right? That's absolutely right. Absolutely. That's absolutely right, George. And I think that's a great uh, summation and breakdown by George Knapp. But getting back to the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick and how compromised he and Arrow seem to be. Here's Ross Coulthard talking, uh, this is an older quote, talking about how there are legacy program members, UFO control group members, as part of a secret uh, review board or a, a council, rather, uh, of Arrow. Uh, that legacy program gatekeepers have been advising Kirkpatrick, and we were one of the first people to, to reveal this months back, that, that Kirkpatrick had people that were actually managing or had been managing the legacy UFO crash retrieval and back in an engineering program, that he had brought those people on board to advise him. I think we've kind of seen the result of that. And I understand earlier that you posted that you actually know the names of these people. Do you plan on revealing them? Yes. Um, actually, I forgot it was you that had that scoop, Matt. It was you. It was the advisory group to Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick that he was keeping very, very secret. But there were, again, people in Arrow who were quite alarmed to discover that their boss, the head of Arrow, was taking advice from a group of advisors who, frankly, were totally and utterly compromised. And uh, I can't name them just yet. I've got plans about what I want to do. But um, what I can tell you is that uh, these are people whom I know are directly involved as legacy program gatekeepers. One of them sat on the National Security Council with Dick Cheney in his White House years. It's very, very interesting to see the people who are now being revealed to me as the people involved in, frankly, this cover-up. And yes, they are going to be named. They are going to be revealed. 
Well, I sure hope so, Ross. He hasn't done so yet, but he says he has plans for how to do this. So hopefully that'll be, uh, you know, revealed uh, soon. Meanwhile, Think Tank posts this cool UFO video of a UFO doing something weird around the skydiver or paraglider. Look at that thing. It's got, it's like a small orb with other orbs zipping around it or an energy field. Uh, hopefully the, the video, uh, the, the, you know, the processing the video will, won't render that invisible. Uh, but hopefully you can see there's this, uh, these weird objects or, or energy moving around this orb. I, I don't know what to make of this thing. What, what is going on here? If anybody has any, uh, insight into what this crazy object is doing or why it's doing it, uh, I would love to know because I've never seen one quite quite like that before. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of this, but it's really compelling footage, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Meanwhile, I don't know about you guys, but my mind often goes back to the pyramids and the Great Pyramids, just fascinated by that and the idea that it could have been a functioning device of some sort or, you know, raise our frequencies or our vibrations or something like that or, you know, maybe just an energy center or, or something. Who knows what those things were for, but they, they, especially the Great Pyramid, does seem to have been a functional uh, device of some sort. Uh, definitely doesn't appear to, you know, have been a tomb. You know, this is what Egyptian tombs look like. Uh, you know, they were very decorative, you know, uh, very, very uh, funky, colorful places. Uh, you know, if you were a pharaoh and you were, you were going to want to hang out somewhere forever, you know, I guess you could do worse, right? Uh, but the inside of the pyramid is, is like industrial looking. It is not, it's not pretty at all. It doesn't look like a tomb at all. So maybe it had some sort of, uh, function or, you know, whether again, it was, that was to raise our vibes or, you know, who knows what they were for, but it's a really interesting idea that they were functional in some purpose. So should we build one today? Well, Jordan Crowder is saying not so fast. Uh, he is referencing, uh, the raw material, you know, the law of one. Uh, and he says, in the raw material, when asked if we could build a current day working great pyramid, raw said that we could, but we don't need to. Humanity has evolved and we now have a natural connection to intelligent infinity. Thousands of years ago, raw was here, working with humans, building these structures to harness particular streamings of the universe. The pyramids were used mainly as a way to connect humans spiritually to source and to facilitate healing. Now, through meditation, most humans can do these things in the comfort of their own homes. So maybe we're all our own great pyramid. Meanwhile, from Chris Sharp at Liberation Times comes this excellent article, Political Volatility Brings Uncertainty and Potential for UFO Disclosure. Basically talking about what's going on now with UFO disclosure and how it's kind of being stalled right now by the elections and by the political processes. Uh, but yeah, he gives us some, some insight into what might, be, what might happen if uh, one or the other candidate wins. Um, you know, if it's, if it's Trump, there's, uh, some, uh, possible, uh, good indications from some people associated with Trump, uh, like this guy named Thiel, uh, also Vivek Ramaswamy, who has, uh, come out as pro-disclosure or pro-transparency anyway. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if, uh, Kamala wins, uh, then we have, uh, uh, a different situation and getting to that, uh, yeah. Harris, currently the most likely nominee, faces a choice. Maintain the status quo by keeping Jake Sullivan as National Security Advisor, uh, Lloyd Austin as Defense Secretary, and Averill Hines as Director of National Intelligence, or appoint her own team who might support greater government transparency. The status quo may provide a or prove a stumbling block with sources telling Liberation Times that both Austin and Haynes are against further UAP transparency. No big surprise there. Uh, but a change within the White House cabinet could reflect more openness to disclosing information, and a change may be likely, especially due to the recent health woes experienced uh, by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. So I'm sorry that he's, he's experiencing those health woes, but there you go. Uh, it's possible that with a new cabinet, you could get a new situation in the White House. Either way, it's a really interesting article talking about what's going on right now uh, in Washington as it relates to UFO disclosure and some possibilities that might be on the horizon. Last but not least, a night jump down a mountain in a snowstorm. 
This guy's got some brass ones. I got to give him that. And this is badass footage. Anyway, let me know what you think about this and everything else covered today in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button for this guy because he's amazing. Uh, and hit the subscribe button for this channel and the bell and the notification bell and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, buy some merch in the merch store. Coffee mug, t-shirt, merch store below. Become a channel member. Channel members are rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos on the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.